Welcome to another edition of Doorway to the Paintings. And here it is. Ancient kingdoms, ancient empires. Yeah, there's a lot of inspiration that went into this one. There's a lot of stuff that uh, went into this painting and inspired this. This is one of my favorites. Not only do you have a beautiful sunset, but the characters, the the king sitting there, and then the guard. This was inspired by quite a few things, not just history and ancient kingdoms, ancient empires, ancient Greece, but also uh, Steve Reeves. I really liked his Hercules uh, movies, and I think he was one of the best uh, um, movie stars in terms of action and adventure. I really liked him. He was a uh, uh, he's one of my big inspirations, and uh, yeah, I really liked his Hercules movies, and then Giant of Marathon was another good one. This was partially inspired by that. This is almost reminds me of a, could have been a scene, could have been one of the scenes in one of the Hercules movies with Steve Reeves. There's a charm to a lot of those older movies, uh, a lot of uh, um, intrigue, fascination. I'm quite fascinated with the sword and sandal epics, and Steve Reeves was one of the best. He was an inspiration to many, and this painting, I think, would fit right into some of those films. This is one I really like. Like I said, not only do you get a nice sunset, but you get a, I mean... You get a king here and a guard, and then you get a painting that was probably, it, it, this is probably one of my favorites, but it could be a scene from a movie. It could come right out of a film. And uh, the contrast, I put blue, bluish kind of uh, purplish, but mostly blue color in there because often at sunset, you can see mountains kind of turning blue or purple, which is beautiful. I really like that. The colors, even though it's just a basic, few basic colors, I think they're utilized quite well. I think it looks really, really well. Then the shine from the sun on the water. The time of ancient kingdoms and kings and warriors and Greek mythology. Well, let's get into this one. Hmm, the candle looks so appropriate for this one. Yeah, I really like this painting. That's darker here. Let me try to get more light in here. There, that's better. Now you could see the blue. Where you couldn't be for except in the first shot when i first came on here but yeah gee i i really think it's beautiful and then the this guard here the soldier the silhouette is so important in my paintings i think it adds so much look at this structure the shape of it there's a lot of impression here but there's also a lot of uh realism here too impressionism and realism in this piece yeah i really really like this painting it's i have to say it's quite thought-provoking it's quite good quite impressive it can fit in in almost any any art collection especially this genre if you like ancient empires and Greece and Rome, mythology, even though there's no mythological figures in this particular painting here. I think the blue really makes a nice touch. Is this king just relaxing or is he giving some marching orders? Is he telling this soldier to go do something? Or just simply guard? Is he kicking back on a Saturday and listening to classic rock and having a few? No. <laughs> I 
his type of classic is not our type of classic. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the ancient times, ancient kingdoms, it's thought-provoking. Uh, I think some of those rulers and em emperors and kings, they, were, they got kind of paranoid and they were so powerful they thought everyone wanted their power. And not all of them, I'm just saying many started to get suspicious and there was a lot of intrigue and a lot of uh, fighting for the throne and backstabbing and people in the shadows planning this or that. Yeah, no matter how powerful a person is, they can be taken down. They got rid of Julius Caesar, and, you know, there's so much, um, so much of that in history. So many interesting figures and characters, and good and bad, good and evil, all throughout history, and what stories could be told. I hope this piece, I hope this art tells stories. I hope it inspires stories. I sure like this one. It's strange, just thinking about Julius Caesar. He got, I think he was assassinated in a room, uh, either near a theater or inside a theater, something like that. And King Philip, um, Alexander the Great's father, was, was killed uh, outside of a theater as well. And you just, there's so much, there's so much to history and of course obviously uh, Abraham Lincoln was killed in uh, Ford's uh, theater I believe by John Wilkes Booth and that's uh, just a horrible thing and it's interesting how history has so many ironic things that happen and so many coincidences and I'm sure you've seen different videos and different e even articles about the similarities between the past and the present and leaders and events and all that stuff was kind of in my mind when I painted this but mostly what was in my mind at the time was those classic uh, Steve Reeves uh, movies that I was talking about and uh, the colors and the sunsets they had some beautiful sunsets and the Hercules uh, movies with Steve's, uh, Steve Reeves. Now let's zoom in on this king here. He's got his goblet. <laughs> What's in his mind? What's he thinking? Quite interesting. Quite interesting indeed. Gee, I love that blue. Gosh. Really like that blue. I put it throughout because uh, naturally that's what happens when you see sunsets in certain areas. Uh, you can see the bluish, purplish colors. Just beautiful. But yeah, since I brought it up about Steve Reeves, and I thought uh, Hercules and Hercules Unchained were very fun movies to watch. The first one's my favorite, uh, but you know, the second one had the potential to be the best. I think if they would have cut out maybe 30 minutes, maybe 25, 30 minutes of the sequence where he lost his memory in Hercules Unchained and they could have added a few more fights like he had with Primo Carnera at the beginning of the film it would have been the best one it would have been even better than the first one but I think they spent too much time where he lost his memory on that island but if they would have had a few more fights like he had with Primo Carnera uh, at the beginning, I think it probably would have been the best one. But because they took too long with that scene, uh, I, I liked the first one the best. But the first one was so good. And then I liked The Giant of Marathon with Steve Reeves. It was a really good movie. I, I've watched those movies over and over again. 
before my generation. I, uh, but still, I like those. They're charming. And um, some of those older movies, uh, whether they age well or not, I think they're really good. And sometimes when they don't age well, <laughs> it's part of their charm. It's like a time machine. You can go back. But actually, I think those Hercules movies, since they're about ancient times, since they're about what happened long ago, yeah, I don't think aging well or not really comes into the equation. It doesn't really matter with that kind of genre and those types of films. And even if it did doesn't bother me at all because I like them so much and it, it's not really it doesn't bring the movies down but yeah this this is one of my favorites and it just uh, I'd like to sit there yeah yeah that sun I've done this before in other paintings but the sun if I remember right because I've done this in many other paintings, it's just the white canvas itself. It's not really white paint. I just painted yellow around it because the white canvas was enough. It was bright enough and it worked really well. But this is one of my favorite paintings. I bet you say that about all your paintings. Shh, don't tell anyone. I do say that about a lot of my paintings. So what? You're included? No, but anyway, <laughs> I do like many of my paintings. There's many, though, I haven't shown you. And it's not because I don't like them a lot, but some of them are not up to par. But most of them are. I very rarely paint a bad painting anymore that I'm not happy with. Just because I've been doing it for so long. And now I try to make sure I have a vision of what I'm gonna paint first. When I first started painting, I just let it kind of fly and whatever came to my mind just spontaneously, it was kind of fun. But I got better, um, you know, I got better skills over time just by doing it. But one of the things that made me better is having a clear vision. A real good artist or a director, they can they have the ability to see ahead. They know what they want, they got the vision in their mind and then they create it. They paint it or they put it on film. And some of my best paintings, uh, most of them, um, came to me when I was just sitting in the dark or, or relaxing, meditating, and thinking deeply about movies or songs or whatever, or just my own experiences. And then it came to me. I mean, that's what makes a good artist or a good director. They can see, see ahead, see what they want and bring it to life. I hope you like looking at this one. Hope you enjoyed looking at this one with me. I really liked it. So uh, subscribe and like. The plan is to be back soon with a new painting, a new video. And uh, share this video so it gets more exposure. And these paintings are seen by more people and enjoyed by more people. So let's take another look at this painting real quick before I sign off. I like getting the full view just one more time. See it from top to bottom. Okay, have a good night everybody. And my plan is to be back soon. Take care. Watch out for the king.